northern part of Nicaragua is historically well-known uh, mining district. Uh, there was never a big industrial production, but uh, this is behind me, on my right side, is uh, the area called San Albino Gold Mine, which was, uh, this place that started the first Nicaraguan Revolution in 1920s. Uh, we are finding on this property many remnants of old tunnels, uh, small pits, uh, which they mined at over time. This happens to be a very uh, important uh, property uh, historically in Nicaragua. There was sporadic operations over at San Albino really since the, the late 18th century. Uh, but the last time that this was effectively a commercial operation, uh, a U.S. businessman tried to get this up and running uh, in, in 1926. Uh, his former general manager uh, was Augusto Sandino, uh, the name, namesake of the, of the Sandinistas. And then the onset of the Nicaraguan Civil War put a, uh, put a stop to it. But the birthplace of uh, Sandino and the birthplace of the Sandinistas comes from this property and our, our former general manager uh, and the namesake of the Sandinista party uh, was walking our grounds uh, nearly a century ago. We're here to build what is the highest grade open pit mine in the world. Uh, we fully commercialized our first uh, stage of production at the middle of 2021. We're here to expand our operation to scale over the course of the next couple of years. Uh, and what I view as the most important part about MAKO is to prove that this is an orogenic gold mining camp, a very different type of geology that you experience in Nicaragua uh, and elsewhere in Central America. MAKO mining controlled four concessions. In total, our land package is 188 square kilometers. Mineralization that we already find is spanning over 28 line kilometers. Veins are shallow deeping towards northwest, which are really uh, the main reason why it's uh, relatively easy to mine them by open pit methods. What is really important here, beside the structural continuity, is the grade continuity and grades by itself. What we are saying here, that the grades is a king. The grades are extremely high for open pitable. Our average is like nine grams per ton for open pit. However, our individual samples are multi-ounce up to, we have a, a intervals over one meter, which is 10 ounces of gold, again, open pitable. Firstly, we do not mine on conventional six meter benches. You can see behind us that we do mine a half bench three meters at a time, but we don't take three meters of the vein out at a single point in uh, time. So what we have is we take channel samples every four meters along the face, and we have our geologists that will guide a very skilled excavator operator to scoop off the hanging wall of the vein and leave no more than 20 or 30 centimeters of mining dilution on either side of that very high grade vein. So we can control our mining dilution to extraordinary levels, more so than just about any other mining company uh, globally today. We started uh, five, five years ago on the challenge of building a mine here. Started with the uh, exploration, and which is now a reality. We have a 500 ton a day mill producing, open pit is uh, going tremendously well. We have a conventional mill uh, that takes the ore from the pit and we take it onto a, a two-stage crusher that uh, reduces the uh, product from the size you see here behind me to uh, minus three-eighths. Goes to conventional milling. We have a CIL, carbon leach circuit, uh, that extracts uh, the metal out of the ore. Después de la molienda, hay dos procesos que se, se utilizan en la planta para extraer el oro. Como ve el proceso de los sil, donde va el carbón, el mineral, el agua y los reactivos principalmente de cal y cianuro. Y el otro proceso gravimétrico a través del concentrador eh, Nelson. Actualmente la planta tiene recirculación de, de la agua. Al final del proceso tenemos un filtro que se llama filtro prensa. Ahí se separan los sólidos que van a un botadero. 
y las aguas a una pila de contacto. Esa agua se monitorea y después, cuando esté acta, vuelve al proceso. Y así ese ciclo se repite cada día. Somos la segunda empresa a nivel centroamericano que realiza la filtración de sus jales. Los jales tienen una presencia del 15% de agua y somos la única empresa en Nicaragua que no realiza vertidos industriales a cauces ni a ríos. Right now, in this moment, we are trying to test extension, especially by strike of San Albino. And hopefully uh, this year we will come with a new resource. One of our advanced project is uh, Las Conchita, where simply because of size of Las Conchita, which is three times bigger than San Albino, we divide it in three different areas. Right now, in this moment, we are in the north, we are focusing Uh, testing the same style of mineralization, which is stacked multi-veins over relatively small areas. We are not looking just for one single deposit. That was our initial target, that we could self-finance our exploration program, which we are doing right now. The company didn't raise any money for probably two years, and our mine is so profitable that it can afford this really extensive exploration program. It is a doable uh, project and we have very good source of personnel here to, to mine. Uh, we have, we're fully staffed now and uh, we are constantly training personnel from the local, from the area to uh, move this pro project forward. Where I see the company going the next five years is uh, double in size and look for more additional resources in this deposit that we have here in Nicaragua. So we do think that as we, as we grow, uh, as we use the cash flow coming from, from San Albino, we're in a much stronger position to be in an envious position to be part of the inevitable consolidation uh, that will happen in the junior mining community. Uh, there are just too many companies out there with too many mines and Mako is in a very, very special situation to have a special asset like San Albino uh, to be uh, the impetus for consolidation within our industry. Thank you.